It's been over three years since I last took you guys on a tour of my studio. Since then, not only have I moved a house and into a new space, but basically every piece of tech that I use daily has changed too. In this video, we'll be covering my desk and everything on it, which I use daily in my full-time job as a content creator, streamer, and podcaster. And we'll also be going through everything else in my studio, including all the gear that I'm using for my YouTube filming setup that you're looking at right now. I'm gonna do my absolute best to link every single product and thing that I talk about down in the description below this video. So if you want to check out any of the gear that I'm using, open up the description and it should all be linked there. All right, so let's get this camera off the tripod onto a gimbal and we'll start by looking at everything that's on my desk. Okay, so starting with the desk, this is the FlexiSpot dual motor height adjustable desk. And the surface on top is the IKEA Colby worktop in walnut finish. Um, I think the width of it is 186 centimeters or 74 inches. The long-term gaming careers viewers will probably recognize this. And this is one of the long-standing pieces of my setup that is still being used today. I've had it for over three years. There's no signs of bowing at all in the worktop. I'm really, really happy with it. The finish still looks great. Uh, so yeah, I use this all the time, adjusting from a sitting to a standing position. The cable management isn't great, but to be honest, with a sit-stand desk, you need to have some movement in all of your cables. And I'm so often changing out parts that I've given up on the dream of having a super slick cable managed desk setup. So it's good enough for me. So sitting on the right hand side of my desk is my main PC, which is built around an i9 9900K and an RTX 3080 Founders Edition. There's some other goodies in there like an Elgato Camlink Pro, uh, which has four different HDMI inputs. That's obviously a, a recent capture card that they've released. And this is all built into an NZXT H500 case. I do also have a streaming PC down here on the floor, which is built around uh, the Ryzen 5 3600X and a 2080 Ti Founders Edition. Absolute overkill for a graphics card, but it was the, the last graphics card that I owned. Um, this second PC doesn't really get as much use, but it's useful for me to have a dual PC setup for any tests of capture cards or audio interfaces that I do for reviews. And sometimes I use it for streaming, although lately really the main streams that I've been doing is the podcast. And since we're just capturing a couple of cameras and some browser windows, I can do that all from a single PC. I use two monitors for this setup, the main one being the Alienware AW2721D, which is a 1440p monitor with an IPS panel and a refresh rate of 240 hertz. So it's the perfect all-rounder for me. It's got big real estate for day-to-day -day use. The IPS panel is great for color accurate work in video and thumbnail creation. And then it's got that 240 hertz, very high refresh rate for gaming. The second monitor is nothing fancy. It's a Dell P2720D. It's just another 27 inch IPS 1440p monitor. This one running at just 60 Hertz because obviously I'm not doing any gaming on it. And I have mounted this in the portrait orientation. Both of these monitors are mounted to some Envision monitor arms um, just through the Visa mounts. Uh, these are actually different to the models that I had in my setup three years ago, although they're from the same company. Uh, these ones support a, a little bit more weight as these new monitors are a little bit heavier. I think they support up to 12 kilograms, which is a bit overkill, but I needed to support a bit more weight for these heavier monitors to still be able to move them around. For lights, in terms of actually lighting myself when creating content, I use two of Elgato's key lights and around the back of my desk to be able to create all of that color that I use in the background of my A-roll shots. I have two Elgato light strips uh, actually stuck to the back of the desk and then five Philips Hue Play light bars, uh, which I use and they're sort of mounted either to the desk or to the backs of my monitors, which sort of gives this huge spill of color that I can control and create gradients that I use in my A-roll set. All of these lights can be controlled from my Stream Decks. Currently on my setup, I have two, the Stream Deck XL and the new Stream Deck Mark II. And pretty much every task that I'm doing day to day as a content creator has some functionality controlled through one of these Stream Decks. Yes, it's a bit of a luxury to have two, but it is quite useful actually when you're live streaming or when I'm live with the podcast to be able to have one Stream Deck completely dedicated to OBS controls and never leaving that page. And then you can use the other Stream Deck for all the other tasks like controlling topics or chat or Discord. The speakers on my desk are the Logitech G560 LightSync. Uh, these are some RGB speakers from a few years ago. To be honest, they're not the best sound, especially if you're comparing it to some professional studio monitors, but they take up a lot less space. And really, I just use them for watching Twitch and YouTube or listening to music whilst working. 
In terms of peripherals, the mouse that I'm using is the Logitech G Pro Wireless. This isn't the new super light version that I would like to try at some point, but it hasn't been in stock for ages. Um, but I couldn't really go back to a wired mouse anymore. I, I love this uh, Logitech G Pro Wireless. This sits on the mouse pad that I'm using, which is the Steel Series QCK XXL. I've been using different sizes of the QCK for probably over 10 years now. I've never had any reason to change. This one is a bit dirty now, it could probably do with a wash. My keyboard is the Philco Magistouch 2 Ninja with Cherry MX Silent Red switches. I really like the look of this with its blank keys where you can only sort of see uh, the which key you're pressing if you're looking at it from an angle. But this is my first dip of my toe into the world of non-gaming keyboards, so I, I feel like that's a slippery slope that I'll probably be spending a lot of money on. As you can see, I've got a few different audio interfaces plugged into my PCs here. The main GoXLR, the original GoXLR, this is what I use on my main PC and really what I use most of the time. I've also got the GoXLR Mini, which is connected to my second streaming PC for additional controls. And then right now I'm using the Wave XLR for testing different microphones, as that's just a clean signal with, with no processing like the GoXLR has. So it's really useful to quickly plug in a microphone to Wave XLR and be able to hear exactly how it sounds by default. This little box here plugs into the back of my GoXLR and it is for my headset, my wireless headset, which is hanging down here below the desk. It is the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless, which is, yes, very expensive, uh, but super comfortable even for people with glasses like me. Uh, and especially if you're going to be wearing them for long periods of time through the day. It's got a really smart swappable battery system, so you're, you're never left without battery. And the sound quality is good enough. I'm never using the microphone for these. And if I ever need something a little more neutral for editing, then I plug in a pair of Audio-Technica M50Xs. I currently have two cameras mounted on my desk, both of which are plugged into the Elgato CamLink Pro. Uh, my main one is a Sony A6400 with a Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens, and this is mounted to Elgato's new mic arm, which allows me to really easily reposition this and even bring it over the top of my monitor if I want to do some top-down shots of my desk. The second camera is the always recommended Sony A5100 with its stock lens, which is 18 to 55mm, I think f3.5. 5 to 5.6 if I remember rightly. This gives a different look to the wide 16 millimeter shot of the A6400 and I currently have this mounted in a vertical fashion just because I want to make it really quick and easy for me to create YouTube shorts or Instagram reels. So having a permanently mounted vertical camera should help minimize the task. The A5100 is mounted to Elgato's Master Mount S, so it can't really move around too much other than just uh, sort of rotating it, but it keeps it in the exact same place. And both cameras are powered by some dummy batteries that I found on Amazon and have worked flawlessly. And they both output through micro HDMI to HDMI and into that uh, Elgato CamLink Pro that I talked about on my main PC. In terms of microphones, I'm always testing new microphones that get sent my way. So this isn't a permanent fixture by any means, but the one that I've been pretty consistently using on the podcast and in any videos has been the Shure SM7B. And this is currently mounted on the Blue Compass mic arm. Uh, but as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm currently doing a bit of a test of loads of different mic arms. So I'm trying to get about two weeks worth of use with each of the different mic arms. So again, this isn't a permanent fixture. Around the back here, I also have a cloud lifter plugged in. This is just if I ever need it for certain microphones or certain interfaces, it's useful to test. I don't have it plugged in every day as the GoXLR, which I'm using can power the SM7B without the need for additional boosting. Mounted behind and around my desk is some acoustic treatment, which I've talked about before. This is from a company called Gick Acoustics, and these panels in particular are the 242 panels. Uh, I have six of them dotted around my room. Yes, they're incredibly expensive, and I know that you can probably build them for a lot cheaper. Uh, but if you watch my comparison video of cheap versus expensive acoustic treatment, you'll know just how good these are. The chair that I'm sat in for probably too many hours per day is the Noble Chairs Hero Black. I've had this chair for about two and a half years now and haven't really had any major issues. There's a bit of wear and tear on the armrests, but other than that, I've been relatively happy. I do want to try the Herman Miller uh, Logitech collaboration chair, but I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet. 
So that's pretty much it for the desk setup, but the studio has a few more things to talk about other than the signed Man United shirt mounted on the wall. I have this big storage unit full of all the things that I'm using often, nicely organized. So in some drawers, I'll have uh, USB microphones, XLR microphones, webcams. I've got my Edelkrone slider kit and anything for the camera down here. I've also got this drawer up top for NDA items, things that I can't talk about or show on screen as I've had to blur out far too many boxes in my time as a YouTuber when I filmed and not realized that something was in shot. These little bins up top are stuffed full of different types and different lengths of cables that I'm often needing to grab. Uh, and I've also got two bins here for chargers and for all the different batteries that I'm using. And batteries only go in here once they are fully charged to make sure that I'm never left without a charged battery. Next, we have my YouTube sort of filming setup. The light here is the Aperture Lightstorm 120D with the Light Dome 2 softbox on top. And these are mounted to a, a Niwa stainless steel C stand. The camera that's normally mounted to this tripod is the one that I'm currently using. It's the Canon EOS R with a 24 to 105 uh, f4 lens on. And the tripod itself is the Manfrotto 055 legs and the Manfrotto 502 fluid video head. In terms of audio for my A-roll, I'm using the Rode NTG4 Plus condenser shotgun microphone. And this is mounted to the Rode SM4R suspension shock mount, a Rode micro boom pole, which I think extends out to about two meters. And then a few products from Niwa, the grip head, the boom pole support holder, and the aluminum light stand. I also use this reflector to bounce light back to fill light on both sides of my face. These are from Niwa, it's the five in one reflector, and it's mounted again to an aluminum light stand and using a spring clamp again from Niwa. At the back of my studio, there's the Elgato green screen, which I hardly ever use if I'm being honest, but it is useful if I ever need to create some kind of content that requires a green screen. I've also got these uh, shutter blinds, which are really useful for blocking out a good portion of the light when I'm trying to film in the day to make sure I have that consistent lighting that isn't constantly changing uh, when I have them open. Finally, I have this big storage unit, which again, I had at the old studio. I've mounted some little RGB lights inside. It's not particularly well done, but from the cameras on my desk, you can't see any of the wires. So these allow me to have some cool alternating light colors in each of the different segments here. Ideally, I'd love to fill this with all kinds of cool accolades from my time as a content creator, but to be honest, it's kind of filled with random bits and bobs at the moment, like the uh, Rodecaster Pro here. I've also got a NAS drive. This is the Synology DS918+, Plus, which I use to back up all my raw video in case I ever need it again. I have got this cool marathon plaque that LiveView gave me after I uh, ran the Manchester Marathon whilst live streaming. And I've got a little uh, interview that I did in Feed Magazine about the technology and the difficulty of actually running that marathon with a camera mounted to my shoulder. And of course, I've got my YouTube award here front and center for people to be able to see whilst I'm uh, at my PC with the cameras pointing at it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the whole studio. Hopefully this video has been helpful and giving you some inspiration in uh, what gear to get for your own studio. You absolutely do not need anywhere near this much stuff uh, to become a content creator. This is gear that I've accumulated over many years doing this as my full-time job. Uh, but hopefully this video has been helpful in giving you that inspiration if you are looking to refresh your setup. If you've watched all the way through this video, do hit the thumbs up button. That helps me know that you like this kind of content and we'll be back to our normal sort of gaming careers, tutorials and reviews type content for the next video. So I'll catch you then. Peace.